Good morning. How are you? How are you feeling this beautiful day? It's a very beautiful morning. Welcome to Woman Crush Wednesday, Rise Today. I am your host, Nina Gikunda Unendeleaje. Unafilaje, how has your week been this far? How was your weekend? How was your Monday? How was your yesterday? Thank you for joining Rise today. Today we have an amazing conversation lined up just for you. Today we get to talk about contraceptives. We get to talk about sexual reproductive health. And we also get to talk about uh, taking care of maternal children and even newborns. Each and everything that we can go about while taking care of these young people, taking care of women, taking care of mothers. And like I said, we get to talk about contraceptives. I am so excited about this particular conversation. Which brings me to my particular question. It is said that one man can impregnate 365 women in a year, but one woman can get pregnant only once a year. So in your opinion, or rather in my opinion, who do you think should take contraceptives? Who do you think should consider contraceptives more than the other? Should we both take precaution? Should we, should our contraception be based more to one gender? Or should we, how should we go about it? Talk to me on all our social media platforms, which are at KUTV Kenya on Twitter, at KUTV Kenya on Facebook, and at KUTV Kenya on Instagram. Let's have this con uh, conversation about contraceptives. Let me know everything you know about contraceptives, what kind of contraceptives you know about. Have you ever tried to use contraception? What is your experience? Each and every little thing you think you know about contraception let's you know educate each uh, each other tell me what you know and i'll tell you what i know we have uh, the kup counseling team with us today here to guide us through this conversation here to let us know uh, each and every thing we need to know about contracep uh, contraception we get to talk about condoms we get to talk about uh pills all of these things but right before we get into deep into this conversation we will be coming right back with COVID updates and our traffic updates. Welcome back. I am back with our traffic updates. We get our traffic updates at Mathri Root on Twitter. So if you have any information concerning the roads where you are, tag us at KUTV Kenya and also tag Mathri Root to be able to help a friend, to help a friend, to help a neighbor. Um, hmm. Thika Road has been a mess this morning. Thika Road is a hot mess. If you're on Thika Road, let us know this far. How do the roads look like? Um, past op all stops, Hakuna Jam. There's a lorry that has broken down at all stops, Hapokwa Highway. So if you are around all stops or even Thika Road, let us know what the roads look like. Thika Road Jam is from Clay City, Kasarani. Mm -hmm. There's also traffic from Githurai all the way up. Hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks like Thika Road is um, what's happening today. Thika Road, if you're on Thika Road, if you are on Thika Road, let us know what the roads look like. Kama imefunguka or uh, it's still hectic and crazy around there. 
And if you are on any other road, Jogo Road, Mombasa Road, Ngong Road, let us know what the road looks like. Fill us in on what things are like wherever you are. Even in the suburbs, not necessarily on the busy, busiest roads. Mm, yeah, that's it for our traffic updates. We'll be coming back with the COVID updates. COVID-19 updates as at 22nd of March 2022. Before I read our COVID-19 updates, I'd like to know, how are you feeling? Are you still wearing your mask? Are you still washing your hands? Or we are back to normal. Unendelea, you know, there's people who decided for them, they'll continue wearing their masks. For them, they'll keep sanitizing. For them, they will keep uh, maintaining social distance. But for some, they've, you know, rolled out back into normal scheduling, normal life you no know, like things were before covid let me know if you're still taking precaution and if so why so as a, uh, as at 22nd of march 2022 we had 17 new cases off of a sample size of 4480 giving a positivity rate of 0.4% two recoveries and zero recorded deaths. Our cumulative tests were 3,478,182. Total confirmed cases, 323,306. Total recoveries, 317,508. And cumulative fatalities are 5,647. And into our COVID-19 vaccination, are you still getting vaccinated? Are you still considering vaccination as part of precaution? Talk to me. Talk to me on all our social media platforms. Uh, uh, total vaccines received are 27 million 87,910. Total doses administered are 17 million 374,904. Total first doses are 7 million 967,097. Fully vaccinated individuals above 18 years are 7,958,138. Individuals between 15 to 18 years who've gotten the Pfizer vaccine are 1,178,671. Booster doses, 270,998. And a proportion of adults who've been fully vaccinated are 29.2 percent so talk to me on all our social media platforms at KUTV Kenya on Twitter at KUTV Kenya on Facebook and at KUTV Kenya on Instagram we will be coming back with tennis updates Welcome back. Back to our clues on the conversation of the day. We get to talk about contraception. And like I asked you earlier, uh, according to our research, you know, it's obvious. One man can impregnate 365 women in a year, but one woman can only get pregnant once a year. Who should consider getting contraception? And into our news for today, with a few weeks left before the political parties and coalitions conduct primaries or issue tickets to their preferred candidates, tough migraines hit the party leaders on how to settle for candidates in the holy, hotly contested seats. Azimio Lomoja has a big hassle in flooring candidates as the constituent parties insisting, insist on field, fielding candidates across all elective posts. Ahead of the party primaries, the political scene is witnessing the game of hope step and jump with candidates defecting from camp to camp in search for greener pastures. Could these be fears of direct nominations or the tough competitions for the party tickets? 
The tension in the breezing battle got stiffer in Kisi County with Senator Professor Sam Ongeri launching his gubernatorial bid under the DAPK party. The region considered to be Odium stronghold is considering to field a great North MP Simba Arati with Jubilee Party aspirant Chris Obure also eyeing the gubernatorial post. This becomes an intercoalition battle for the Azimula Moja camp. DPK leader Eugene Wamalo, however, is the tension saying that the parties are not competing but complementing each other. Nazimiola Moja kwa nyumba ya baba kuna viumba vingi. Kuna chumba cha ODM, chumba cha Jubilee, kuna chumba cha DAP. Sisi kama Azimio affiliate parties, we are not here to compete with each other. We are here to complement each other. We are not here to compete with each other, but to compete na wale watu wa Kenya kwanza. Tuko pamoja. Desimio camp is not spared the headache in Nairobi County as well, facing a delicate balancing act in picking candidates for the governor's seat. The camp has strong contestants, including Western's MP Timonyonyi, Governor Ann Kananu, businesswoman Ann Kagure, and a close confidant to the handshake regime, Richard Ngatia. This extends to the Kenya Kwanza Park that also has a former Sare MP Bishop Margaret Wanjiru and Senator Johnson Sakaja. The nomination dates continue to draw nearer with the electoral body IBC set to register candidates from 29th May to June 9th. The reviewed Elections Act mandates that candidates are required to be members of a political party by 26th March 2022, signifying an end to the party hopping. Political parties have until April 22nd to conduct nominations. Welcome back. Deputy President Dr. William Ruto yesterday unveiled former Chief Administrative Secretary Patrick Olentutu as the official UDA candidate in the Narok County's gubernatorial race. Addressing Narok residents, Dr. Ruto said that the decision was made after a discussion with the other aspirants who had eyed the position on a UDA's ticket. Seth Wasike has a detailed report. <laughs> Deputy President Dr. William Ruto has today led the Kenya Kwanza campaigns in Narrow County, where he attended the campaign launch of former CAS in the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare, Patrick Olentutu, who is expected to fly the UDA ticket in the gubernatorial race. <laughs> While addressing residents at Olepiric Farm, the UDA chief encouraged unity among county residents. <laughs> Wale tupigia simu, wengine wakaandika SMS, wengine wakaandika WhatsApp, wengine wakatupigia simu kusema ya kwamba sio vizuri watu wa naro wagawanyike kwa mashindano ya governor. Ni kweli ama si kweli? Dr. Ruto, who was accompanied by other Kenya Kwanza leaders, rolled the ball in favor of the coalition, insisting that it is the only way to change and an assurance of development. Nasema tutahakikisha ya kwamba kila mtu anafanya biashara na hako na pesa ya kufanya hiyo biashara na wale wote wanatafuta mikopo, hasa wananchi wakawaida ambao hawajulikani kwa mabank ambao hawana security tutawasaidia ili waweze kupata pesa ya kuendesha biashara zao ndio tuweze kuweka pesa kwa mfuko ya kila mwananchi other leaders who had accompanied the deputy president took to stage to throw a spear on former prime minister Raila Odinga condemning him of invading the jubilee government and wanting him to retire in peace Wanatishia watu ya kwamba wakikuwa wanapata hiyo governor kuna wengine watadhulumiwa. Si mmesikia hiyo maneno? Mimi nimesema nikiwa mbugawe au governor wenu nitahakikisha ya kwamba kila kabila tuko na kabila 45 ya wakenya ambayo wako na rokaundi. Kuambia muzigo wa kitandawili ni muzito. pande moja kuna rais uhuru kinyata na wale watu ambao baba yake alikuwa baba yake alikuwa baba yake alikuwa 
na upande wetu ni sisi na nyinyi wananchi ambao baba yetu ni baba yetu tu hakuwa mtu yeyote it's a sigh of relief for the former CAS after the current women representative Soy Pantuya, Narok South MP Korei Olemeyin and Narok West MP Gabriel Tongoyo stepped down. The final decision will be made by Narok residents on the August 8th elections. Seth Wasike for KUTV. On to our next story, Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has admitted few cases of exam malpractices have been reported across the country despite heightened monitoring of the exercise. The two principals, place center managers and rogue security officers at the center of exam cheating syndicate that involves taking photos of exam papers and distributing the same to students and their associates. As the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education KCSE exams entered its second week, Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has confirmed there have been few cases of exam cheating despite security measures put in place. But we shall not allow cell phones into examination centers except for the two emergency ones. One will be uh, provided by the Ministry of Interior to the policeman and one from our side to the center manager and work will continue that way very well. CS Magoha revealing candidates have devised ingenious ways to steal the exams, some even hiding cheating material in their religious robes. One of the kids must have been must have hidden uh, the cell phone. As we respect religion, can we also make sure that we frisk properly? We respect religion, whichever religion you you have. There is freedom of worship, but don't use religion to hide a cell phone into the examination hall. According to the two principals in the Ministry of Education, most cases involve exam center managers who collude with rogue security officers manning exams to take pictures of exam papers and distribute to their colleagues and the candidates. It's a small cartel. What they do is that they, they, want, they put one center manager who conspires with the security officer they open the second paper especially at that time when they're opening the first paper. Then they take a photo and send to, uh, to some people. Nonetheless, the education principals maintain the exam process is going on smoothly despite few challenges, insisting they remain vigilant to safeguard the integrity of the entire exercise. The last bit of the security feature, which as the CS said yesterday, we can't give many details about, has helped us thoroughly that if you take a photo of the exam and we are able to see the photo, we'll be able to use our system to identify where the photo has been taken. Magoha has additionally confirmed the marking exercise of the KCP exams is almost complete and the official release of the results will be communicated after meeting of key education stakeholders. Uh, in terms of the marking of primary school exams, I think we are about to complete like we gave you, we have targets, and the targets are met. So uh, I will now soon start looking for H1. Whenever he is ready, because we have to discuss the results with him, then we shall release the results to uh, our children. Henry Tende, KUTV. Thank you for the story. On to the next. Kwale Governor Salim Mvuria yesterday answered to complaints tabled to the Departmental Committee on Financial Planning in the County Hall regarding a lack of on submission of financial and technical reports. This gives blind spots in the revenue collection, usage and auditing to aid in project planning and lack of risk management policies, strategies and risk mitigation. In a report submitted by the Auditor General of the Departmental Committee on Financial Planning, Nancy Gadungu, audit review of the revenue management system Kwale County revealed that receipts amounting to 3,669,250 shillings had been reversed and there were no checks over the sub-county revenue officer rights to void the receipts. A scenario the report indicated could open the county executive to fraud and manipulation of revenue data. In an audit review for the status report dating 30 June 2020, 
a budgetary allocation of money amounting to 3 billion 585 million 64,063 Kenyan shillings had been issued for the implementation of 522 projects in the county of Kwale. Of those 265 projects had been completed as of 30 June 2020, 154 were ongoing, 154 had not started and 11 projects had stalled, translating to unrealization of the value for money of the ongoing and stalled projects. The committee also demanded a response from the governor Salim regarding the delay of a 10 years in duration of the implementation of a risk management policy, which includes a fraud prevention mechanism, internal control to build robust business operations, guidance regarding the management of risk to support the achievement of corporate objectives to protect staff and business assets and ensure financial sustainability, citing the lack of clarity on how the management managed risk exposures. You say there was no risk management because draft is not approved and you cannot use it as a source. What you need to provide Governor first is the evidence of the current status that uh, it has been approved by the county executive and uh, it has been transmitted to the county assembly. Mm. That evidence needs to be provided to the auditors. Of course, the other aspect is the explanation of how, why it took this long, but that's a matter now for the committee to decide because we are not getting a very clear reason. Honorable Salim is hereby required to verify the status of the project implementation, giving detailed financial statements and verifying the risk management policy with the Auditor General in 30 days. Daphne Orina for KUTV. And on to our next story. But before we get into our next story, I'm still waiting for your feedback on uh, what you think in regards to contraception and even the conversation for today. What do you think we should do in regards to contraception? And each and every little thing or all the information you think you know about contraception. And I'm here with some people who will be giving us very useful information. But right before that, back to our stories. Two decades of drought in the western United States has pushed the nation's second largest reservoir to record lows. Lake Powell in the arid southwest is in danger of dropping too low for turbines in the reservoir's dam to produce electricity that helps power millions of homes. It's part of a worsening picture for water supplies in the American West linked to climate change. VOA's Steve Baragona has more. Under the soil, moving slowly through rock layers and inside aquifers, groundwater quietly coexists with us. It is the primary drinking water source for half of the world and a source of water for irrigating crops. And it's in trouble. The theme of this year's World Water Day, a UN Observance Day, is groundwater, its importance and the threats it faces. Groundwater is a really um, fascinating and frankly uh, much under-discussed um, element of our um, water cycle. As rain or snow seeps through the ground, it becomes groundwater, often clean and stored in the earth. Groundwater can be a backup source of water during times of drought when lakes and rivers dry up. So groundwater is kind of the buffer uh, for many uh, irrigation uh, um, uh, places in the, in, the, in the world to um, uh, the, uh, substitute for this lost uh, surface water during droughts. Environmental advocates are concerned that the world's biggest groundwater aquifers are being depleted faster than they are being replenished, and that can lead to other issues. So that the ground starts to uh, deplete or, or sink, and you can't refill that. Like, you can't repump that full of water. Once there's subsidence, you've lost that capacity for water storage. Groundwater is also threatened by pollution and mismanagement. And in many cases, the contamination that we see in, um, in, in groundwater is the product of uh, things that, were, um, that happened decades back. 
Environmental advocates say people should ask where their water comes from and push their elected officials to include water management in setting policies for future growth. We need to make sure we're looking at the whole system and not just one piece of it. With the world's population expected to keep growing, experts say that better understanding and managing of the planet's groundwater may be key to our future survival. The country's rapidly growing capital city is facing severe problems with the supply and quality of its water, driving people to buy it from unsafe and potentially contaminated sources. The Ministry of Water, through Athi Water Works Development Agency, has initiated the process of digging boreholes in the informal settlement to avert water shortage crisis. Most of the country's slums lack enough clean water and they are generally filthy, known for flying toilets. In our visits to Kibra slums, it is evidently clear that clean water in Kibra is not only scarce, but it is also costly, inconsistent and contaminated. Water, one of the most precious and basic resources, is commodified by the government and private cartels. Kibra's impoverished residents are charged more for water and there is no guarantee that the water is clean. <laughs> Women and children of Kibra spend hours locating a water vendor, queuing up and carrying back the water. The situation is no different in Mukuru Karuban slums. Despite measures put in place to stop the spread of the virus, among them being basic hygiene of washing hands with soap and water, it appears that it might not be basic, especially for residents in the slum. Na hapo kitambo tulikuwa na challenge ya maji sana. Kwa siku nilikuwa natumia 30 bobu kununua maji. Lakini tangu tanki iletwa hapa nyuma yangu nimefaidika sana. Maji likuwa inatolewa mbali sana na maroli na kama una uwezo wa kununua mtungi moja shilingi dhati ama, ama foti unakuwa sasa hauna maji baka ya kunawa hata ya kunywa. Kwa hivyo sasa ndiyo tulikuwa na hiyo shinda lakini sasa e, shinda hiyo ya kinjiji hiki ikatatuliwa tu, tu wakati, e, wakati hii mpua horo ilichimbwa na ikawa inatowa maji. With the fear that coronavirus might spread like wildfire in slums, the Ministry of Water has initiated drilling of boreholes project to help alleviate the water crisis in the informal settlement. We have over 14 million liters per day that has been brought into the informal settlements across the city, uh, targeting about 750,000 people. Uh, we are going to enhance this investment to other parts of the city and also to improve on what we have done. We are also going to include other areas in the metropolis, that is Kiselian, Kitengela, some parts of Dika, Kiadutu. The question, however, is whether the government will dig enough boreholes to ensure that there is enough supply of water to slum dwellers who, according to the 2019 census, make up to 60% of the city's population. Even though critics have lashed at the Ministry of Water for sleeping on their job when it comes to ensuring enough supply of water in the city, Cabinet Secretary for Water, Cecily Karioke, insists that her docket has been up to its task. In the past incidents, we had water drilled, sunk, running out in a record two weeks. It means, therefore, working together we are able to do so much more within such a short time as has been demonstrated with the emergence of the COVID pandemic. Permanent Secretary for Water and Sanitation, Joseph Irongo, reveals that they dug into the supplementary budget to initiate 51 boreholes project in Nairobi County and majorly in Nairobi informal settlement. So we are on course. Um, we have seen success stories. So far we have not had uh, any borehole that disappoints us. Uh, the ones that are ready, the 51 of them are in use. And I think uh, the communities are, uh, are managing. Their water is for free, it is not for sale. Because during this COVID period, uh, we intended that the informal settlements have adequate water for the hard wash, because it's a measure of, uh, of containing the, the spread of the, of, the, of the COVID, among other measures that, are, uh, that have been propagated by the government. Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko transferred the water services function to the Nairobi Metropolitan Service, led by General Mohamed Badi, who admits that there was need for more boreholes project in Nairobi County due to the increasing population. 
we had to intervene. Uh, first and foremost, informal settlements were completely cut off from water. There is no water piping in some of the settlements at all. Uh, just look at uh, Mukuru, Kibera, there's no water in the taps. So that is why uh, we immediately embarked uh, on first drilling 51 boreholes. Uh, and then we are lucky we got the support through His Excellency, the President. Uh, we added uh, another 42 balls to make a total of 93 balls. As regular hand washing is a key tool in combating COVID-19, calls have been rife to ensure that people living in informal settlements have access to running water at this critical time. We have come to the end of our news updates for today. But if you want some more news, keep it KUTV. We have a lot of news uh, ahead of us in through the day and even in through the week. Keep it KUTV for all your news updates, your uh, entertainment updates, each and everything you need to watch and learn. It's here at KUTV. Right before we go, uh, get into our break, we, like I said earlier, we have an important conversation on sexual reproductive health. What a beautiful day today. We get to talk about sexual reproductive health. We get to talk about contraception. Quite an, an interesting conversation to have on this day. Keep it KUTV. Uh, today I also ha happen to have a conversation with a little girl by the name Alicia. Alicia is taking milestones at the age of eight. She's uh, representing Kenya in another country. She's little Miss Universe. Did you know that? Did you know that? I will be having a conversation with her later, but right now, a short break. Time? Yeah, I'm kind of scared, but okay. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mess with me. Yeah, let's do this, man. This is Tech Innovation Show Women in Tech Edition. After campus, I went to create my first email address and what shocked me was the prize of creating an email address. Personally, one achievement that I made last year that uh, I'm really proud of was uh, being recognized as a GDE. I'm recognized as the first female flutter GDE in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the first uh, GDE in Kenya as well. Approximately 120,000 people develop TB in Kenya every year. 48,000 of those people are people suffering from HIV and AIDS. And 18,600 are people who die from TB. Yes, so tuberculosis is an infectious disease caused by a bacteria, a special kind of bacteria that we call mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yeah. And um, the importance of TB is that it's still a global problem. You know, okay. it's an old problem that's been with us for centuries, uh, but it still continues to cause a lot of ravage in the world. Therefore, it is important for us to create awareness on TB, the prevention and also the treatment. And that's going to be our topic today on Focus on Health. Safina inangwananga sasa hivi Hivi sasa ni saa mbili Ijumaa usiku badala ya saa tatu kamili juu ya alama due to public demand ungana nami albanas 
Mwania nahodha wa Safina Show ni kutoe ngambo ya pili hadi ufuoni Safina Show sauti ya matumaini Tamani kufika pale mji mzuri ajabu wapendeza hakuna mfano wa mazuri ajayo jitahidi ufike wingu ni juu This is Technovation Show Women in Tech Edition. After campus, I went to create my first email address and what shocked me was the prize of creating an email address. Personally, one achievement that I made last year that um, I'm really proud of was uh, being recognized as a GDE. I'm recognized as the first female flutter GDE in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the first uh, GDE in Kenya as well. for staying and tuning in this far. Like I said earlier, today we get to talk about sexual reproductive health, we get to talk about contraception, and we also get to look at maternal, uh, uh, newborn, and childcare in our country. Such an interesting conversation to have. But right before we get into the conversation, I asked you to talk to me on all our social media platforms, at KUTV Kenya on Twitter, at KUTV Kenya on Instagram, and at KUTV Kenya on Facebook. Before we get into the conversation of the day, I'll tell you about this little eight-year-old girl who is ticking big milestones at her age. She is currently representing Little Miss World Kenya. Can you imagine? At eight years old, she gets to represent the country in Dubai to contest for Little Miss World all over the world. We are, uh, we are about to listen to her story, what inspires her, what uh, motivates her, what makes her do what she actually does. At her age, tune in. Thank you so much for joining us once again this is woman crush wednesday rise today today i have this amazing little girl with me on set imagine being miss world at eight years old i have tiny miss world kenya 2019 here with me today on today's episode here to talk about her journey how she's made it this far to clock this kind of milestone at her age the things she's managed to achieve the things that she's been going through and how she feels to represent kenya in a different country in the contest of being tiny miss world Thank you. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling fine. You're feeling fine? Yeah. What is your name? My name is Alicia Bell Nyambura. Mm -hmm. And how old is Alicia Bell Nyambura? Eight years old. You're eight years old? Yeah. And you are already Miss World? Yeah. That's nice. Thank Where do you go to school? Kiraguya Municipality, Boarding and Primary School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that you are a very beautiful, tiny Miss World Kenya, how do the people in your school take you? 
how is the experience in school being in this world how are your studies how is everything in school it's good and it's amazing i love education mm -hmm. yeah wow that is nice what is your favorite subject i love them all you love them all yeah. that is good that's a very good um attitude yeah. i love 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 mm -hmm. what do you love doing I love dancing, mm -hmm. singing, modeling, mm -hmm. I love making new friends, uh -huh. I love flowers, I love video games, and I love playing. You love playing? Yeah. You love making new friends? Yeah. That's nice. Why do you love making new friends? Because, because every time that I'm bored, I always feel bored, so I talk to myself. Mm -hmm. Let me just go and make new friends so I you can play. talk to them. Oh, yeah. that's a good answer. Give me a high five. That is very nice. That is very, very nice. Now that you are tiny Miss World, you are going to represent Kenya in another country. Yeah. Where? Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. How does that make you feel? It feels amazing. It feels amazing. Yeah. Hmm. And are you going to win? Yeah. You're so sure? Yeah. Why are you so sure? Because every time, every time they support me. Mm -hmm. Who is they? Your family? My mother, my mm -hmm. family, my friends mm -hmm. at church. Yeah. You and go to church? Yeah. Nice. Where do you go to church? The House of Destiny. House of Destiny. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? I like to be Miss World, mm -hmm. pastor, and a makeup artist. And Miss World? A pastor and a makeup artist. Yeah. You want to be Miss World because you are you are already Miss World, right? Yeah. A pastor. Why do you want to be a pastor? Because every time my pastors always tells me stories and they inspire me. Nice. Uh, right now at at your age, yeah. do you preach to people? No. You've not started. Sometimes at home I always preach for my mother a little. You do? Yeah. Does she listen? Yeah. Does she do what the word of God says? Yeah. That is very good. And you also want to be a makeup artist. Yeah. You can do makeup for yourself? A little. A little. That's amazing. Now, I'm wondering, hmm, what inspired you to be Miss World? So, who inspires me every time is my mother. Mm -hmm. She always says me, she always says to me, I can do it, mm -hmm. and I do it. And you actually do it. That is beautiful. It is nice to have an inspiring mother, you know. Yeah. It is actually a blessing. And what, who, who do you look up to in, in this industry? Um, actually, I look up for my friends. Mm -hmm. I look up for my mother mm -hmm. and my family. And your family. Yeah. What, do, what would you like to tell? Uh, the people who support you. I like to tell them mm -hmm. if they're going another country, I would support them, like giving them money, mm -hmm. or if I I go with them and support them if they are doing anything. Mm -hmm. If they are going modeling, dancing, or singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why singing and dancing? Because you you never know where you're going to shoot. True. You never know where your star is going to shine. Yeah. That is very true. We also tell them, thank you for supporting you, right? Yeah. We tell them, thank you for supporting me and thank you for being there for me, right? Yeah. What, how are you feeling now that you're going to climb an aeroplane, then you're going to go to Dubai? You're going alone? No, I'm going with my mother. Your mother? You have yeah. a good mother. She's supporting you every single step of the way. Yeah. That is very nice. <laughs> Now, once you become, what are you going to win when you become Miss World? I'm going to win a crown and a sash. A crown and a sash. Yeah. What are you going to do when you win? I'm going to thank the people who supported me mm -hmm. and mostly my mother. And mostly your mother. Yeah. That is nice. Anything else you want to do maybe for your friends, to help others, yeah. you know, to anything else you would like to do? Yeah. What? I like to support my friends, mm -hmm. help them in every way. Yes, help them in every way. Yeah. That is beautiful. And you also have to finish your studies. That is very beautiful.
Do you have projects that you're doing? Yeah. Like which one? Um, my project is called The Backbone of the Earth, mm -hmm. Topic Eco Planet. Tree planting and recycling, cleanups and going to children's homes. Oh nice. So you plant trees, you clean up the environment. That is interesting. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel amazing because I'm helping the earth. Mm. Do you think planting trees makes the world a better place? Yeah, it helps the environment and also animals. Some birds can live in the trees. Some what? Birds. Mm -hmm. So when you plant trees, you're creating a home for more birds. Yeah. That is interesting. When you go to Dubai, mm -hmm. would you want to continue with your projects when you come back? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah, what other projects would you want to do? Um, I would like to do um, making things with bottles, mm -hmm. cardboard, and other more things. Uh -huh. And then when you make them, you sell them yeah. and make money out of it. When you get a lot of money, what are you going to do with the money? Some of the money I'll help the children homes. Oh, nice. And give poor people. Mm -hmm. You have children's homes that you already help? Yeah, two. Two? Two. Oh, yeah. nice. How, what, what, why, why do you help them? Because when I help them, I feel good. I, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm helping the whole world. Oh, wow. That is nice. You help too? And you want to be helping more when you get more money. Yeah. That is very beautiful. Would you want to have your own children's home when you grow up? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm, that is interesting. Uh, what would you want to tell the world in regards to you going to Dubai and you going to win your crown? Mostly I'll tell them mm -hmm. if they're going in a runway, be confident. Don't be nervous. Mm -hmm. And always ask for support for more people. Mm -hmm. And to others, I'd like to say, help the poor people and who are in children's home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. That is beautiful. If you met the president of Kenya right now, mm -hmm. what would you tell him? I'll tell him to support me when I go to Dubai mm -hmm. and ask him for a little money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not a lot of money. He can give you a lot of money. But just want a little. I, 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 can, I can ask him to give me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. To go to Dubai. In, in line with uh, asking for some money, you can support Alicia in her quest to go bring the crown back home from Dubai. She's contesting for Tiny Miss World and she'll be going to Dubai soon. When are you going to Dubai? 25th of March. That is when the competition is. Yeah. Wow. So as uh, she prepares to go to Dubai on the 25th of March for her competition, you can, if you are okay, you can uh, support her in giving her some funds. You can, her pay bill number is 587-9379. Support this course, help this little girl go bring the crown home. You know, support a little girl's dream. She's confident enough to go to another country to bring the crown back home, right? Yeah. What does this crown mean to you? It means it means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah. What 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 is the first thing you will do if you win this crown? I'll thank I'll thank my parents. Mm -hmm. I'll thank my family and those who have supported me. And those who have supported you, and you will tell them thank you. Yeah. That has been Alicia Bell, Tiny Miss World Kenya 2019. We will be sure to tag you on wherever we can get the show support her watch the show if you can they do have um, a, a, a fund they're trying to raise some money for her to be able to fill in all her expenses as she goes to dubai to represent kenya for tiny miss world support alicia bell do tag us on all our social media platforms at KUTV Kenya on Twitter, at KUTV Kenya on Facebook, at KUTV Kenya on Instagram. And on our pages, we will let you know where to watch her from, how you can support her. I have been your host, Nagi Kunda. See you shortly. That was Alicia Bell's story, Tiny Miss World at 8 years old. I have a challenge. What were you achieving at 8 years old? What were you doing to support your dreams at 8 years old? And because we have this tiny 8-year-old who's already living in her dream, I'd urge each and every one of us, if you can, 
chip in let's all stand behind her let's cheer her on you know once again you can you know, throw in something into her pay bill num into her pay bill into her fundraiser her, uh, the till number is 5879379 you know mchangie let's support this little girl out there as she's carrying the whole country's flag trying to represent us trying to get us that crown back home that is alicia bell into our conversation of today, we are talking about sexual reproductive health. Earlier on, I told you we'll also be talking about contraception. And I have guests today here to guide us on uh, what they do, the achievements they've made. They try to, they work with adolescents, teen moms, uh, trying to get them back to school, motivating them, you know, taking care of them, and showing them that being a mother, even as a teenager, is uh, not the end of life. Haribu sana. How are you? How are you feeling this morning? I'm oh, okay. You're okay? <laughs> yeah. It feels uh, good to be alive. <laughs> it is, it is. It is a blessing to be alive. Kindly allow, introduce yourselves, Sheila and Margaret. Um, Who is Sheila? Uh, my name is Sheila Chepkire. Mm -hmm. uh, by profession, I'm an epidemiologist and a biostatistician. Mm -hmm. uh, professionally, at the moment, I work for organization you of African... What? epidemiologist and a, and a biostatistician. For those of us who don't <laughs> want to understand, kindly fill us in on what those uh, epidem are. Epidemiology basically is a, uh, uh, it's more of a research. It's uh, basically if you're an epidemiologist, you're a researcher. Mm -hmm. It's just, we find out the determinants of diseases and uh, the causes, the etiology and the tend and uh, uh, tend to look at the preventive side more than the curative side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have different type of epidemiologists. You can be a field epidemiologist, a clinical epidemiologist. Oh. Yeah. Biostatistics is just uh, statistics mm -hmm. in biology, oh, okay. evidence-based yes. mm -hmm. research. Yes. Yeah. So that is Sheila. Yes. <laughs> and who is Margaret? Uh, my name is Margaret Akini uh, Atieno. I am a gender officer at Organization of African Youth Kenya. Uh, in gender, you know, we deal with issues of gender mainstreaming, gender equality, and I'm passionate about sexual reproductive health of adolescent and young people, ensuring just ensuring that uh, their well-being uh, comes out strongly so that they grow to be better individuals okay. in the future. Okay. This far. A today part of our conversation will be contraceptives. A considering the fact that you have worked with teenagers and adolescents, I'd like to pose a question. Do you think that adolescents or other teenagers should be introduced to contraceptives? Well, if I can go first, I what I know is that uh, adolescents, uh, most of them lack information regarding their sexual reproductive health. Mm -hmm. So first of all, they need to be given information regarding um, their reproductive health, whereby they'll be introduced to issues of contraception, issues of HIV, he issues of uh, gender-based violence, mm -hmm. and how to prevent those issues. So when an adolescent is given that information regarding uh, contraception, they are able to make informed decisions regarding contraception in the sense that if I'm, um, I'm told that when you use, um, let's say, Implanon, because we have different forms of uh, Contraception. contraceptions. Mm -hmm. So there is Implanon, there is uh, pills and emergency pills. Mm -hmm. And emergency pills uh, should not be used uh, by adolescents uh, more than twice in a year. Mm -hmm. They are actually and, just And actually the... The adolescents generally they are, they are not really supposed to be to be using uh, contraceptions, uh, in exception uh, where they are sexually active, mm -hmm. and uh, they want themselves, and that requires that they have an assent. If they work in a facility, they they should be able to uh, provide an assent, and then the parent provides a concept, a consent. I mean, in the sense that. Um, 
uh, the, 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 the child, uh, the adolescent uh, needs the contraception. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see, uh, those are some of the issues and the factors that uh, really prevent adolescents from uh, using contraception, especially when it comes to matters of consent and assent. Exactly, because I don't see which mother will take their child to a doctor to get contraception, especially at teenage. Yeah, some parents do, but you see, uh, when the child has not assented, yes. it also uh, brings an issue to the health service provider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is the difference between assent and consent? Uh, when we talk about assent, we are talking about a person who is by law, mm -hmm. by Kenyan law, under 18 is a child. Mm -hmm. So they need to agree that they want the contraceptive, that's an assent because they are below 18 years. Oh, but assent is yes. below 18. Yes, mm -hmm. but when it's a consent, it's someone who is above 18 years and they have uh, their responsibility to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So yes, we need both an assent and a consent when uh, dealing with uh, teenagers and contraceptives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is your opinion? Do you think they should get contraception? I. I do not particularly think they should get contraception. I think getting contraception is a very personal de de decision. Mm -hmm. I think they should be given knowledge, and that's that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to talk about sexual issues. Mm -hmm. uh, people assume people, even as we can say as we grew up, we just like learned about it on our own yeah. from our peers. Yes, yes. Nobody really sat us down and told us, you know, this is this. This is HIV, and this is how it happens. Mm -hmm. This is how teenage pregnancies happen. Mm -hmm. So it's the the lack of conversation that is really needed. Needed, yes. Yeah, Margaret, you've said you're very passionate. You said you're very passionate about sexual reproductive health, especially mm -hmm. for teenagers. Yes. This far, how has your experience been trying to take care of these adolescents who are already teenage moms? Uh, some of the adolescents that we deal with, uh, for example, yesterday we were in Kuruko Jenga. So we try to provide them with information and uh, we bring various facilitators in terms of um, entrepreneurship for those who don't want to go to school. Mm -hmm. And also we bring uh, TVET personnel, uh, people in charge, uh, where they can uh, do a course uh, in which uh, they would love to do. Who, and Who is TVET? Uh, technical Vocational uh, Educational Training Institutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, those who have given up on continuing with education, we motivate them to ensure that they go get the technical skills that are required for the job markets currently mm -hmm. so that they can be able to earn a living. Because as I said earlier, uh, also GBV starts, uh, gender-based violence starts when um, as a woman or a lady, you're not able to be economically empowered. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're dependent on a man, that is where uh, GBV starts uh, in, and then uh, you'll be you'll be subjected. You'll be a subject to to that person because you you, you continuously on yeah you, you continuously on depend them. on them yes. yeah and also just having some form of economic empowerment uh, gives you some bodily autonomy mm -hmm. where you can be able to use um the contraceptives that we talk about because you know our society is also patriarchal yeah. so when you have the knowledge and the power you'll be able to to make that info, uh, informed decisions and if you're ec economically empowered, you'll be also be able to make those critical decisions regarding your whole body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sheila, do you run a foundation or how are you able to you know, take care of these adolescents and teenage moms? Uh, so be basically this is a project that is running mm -hmm. for a year. Um, it is, uh, we, are, we are being um, funded by PMNCH, which is Partnership for Maternal, Neonatal, and Child Health. Mm -hmm. um, so when we are funded, we get a group of young girls, mm -hmm. especially in informal sectors, uh, teenage moms. We are actually trying to get teenage fathers on board, which is a very oh, difficult really? group to come across. Yes. So uh, we just take them through mentorship, and then we have a lot of partners. We partner with like Masai Technical Institute. Mm -hmm. We have Dandora Greenlight, and we bring them on board. Like yesterday, having the second engagement, we were able to have uh, people saying, you know, I've started the application. 
uh, to Dandora at Bring Light. I want to go back to school. I'm going to do mechanical engineering. I'm going to do beauty. And at the end of the day, we create a safe space for these mothers to talk about sexual health, gender-based violence, um, how they can economically empower themselves. And providing of this space, safe space, we ensure that it, um, the project is sustainable by ensuring it's in a youth center. Mm -hmm. That way, even without us, without, without the funding, these safe groups can continue. Can continue. Yes. You've mentioned that you're trying to bring teenage fathers aboard. Yes. Why is it difficult? Um, <laughs> How is that going? It's it's going well. Like I think we have uh, ten out of a group of thirty mm -hmm. who are teenage fathers. So oh. as for me, I think that's like around twenty five percent, percent yes. which is a really good number mm -hmm. because we think that this conversation about uh, sexuality cannot continue without uh, men being involved. Yes, that is yes. true. Yes, and are they responsive? Uh, so far, yes, they are very responsive. Mm -hmm. They also they have been they also feeling like they have been left out for a while. Nobody's talking about the boy child. Yeah. Nobody's really saying what is happening uh, with with the boy child. Why is there gender based violence? Why are there suicides? Why are there rape cases? So I, uh, it's been responsive so far, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to get quite a number by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Margaret, yes. this brings me to the why question. Why? Why do you want to take care of these adolescents? Why do you want to take care of these teenage moms? Why? Uh, we, uh, we are taking care of them so that they become a better individual and make positive contribution to the society mm -hmm. in the sense that um, if, if, if uh, an adolescent uh, leaves school at form three, they can be able to go back to the school and achieve that dream that they had, mm -hmm. rather than uh, not having somebody to support them. So we support them with, with information, and we also support them through linking them with a technical institution, and also encouraging them to venture into online um online entrepreneurship where they can earn some living because we know the world is going digital and uh -huh. the market marketplace is nowadays online. Uh -huh. So we try to motivate them by offering that mentorship, um, holding their hands. You know, when uh -huh. somebody holds your hand, they act as a mentor, they act as a coach, and you'll yes. be able to reach that dream faster. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sheila, I'm so sure that these uh, young girls and these young men, these young moms, yes, these teen moms, uh, sometimes they may feel like life has come to an end because now they are moms. What happens to their life afterwards? Is there anything that you're doing to take care of their mental health? Uh, yes, definitely. Even uh, yesterday's session, uh, we had a... Uh, a session on mental health mm -hmm. because as i said we work with partners mm -hmm. and uh, we work with one organization called utena that deals with mental health so whenever we go into an engagement we make sure as much as we talk about all those other things we also talk about mental health mm -hmm. and also give referrals of where if you're feeling very overwhelmed uh, stressed and you feel like you just can't go on where do you go who do you call so we, we offer those services. Mm -hmm. So, uh, For example, if I can add on to what she's saying, uh, there are online platforms which provide uh, psychological counseling from LVZT Health. Mm -hmm. It offers uh, individuals um, uh, uh, psychological counseling on matters uh, mental health mm -hmm. and also reproductive health for the young people. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, considering you're working with teenagers, yeah, I'm sure... Their parents, the, the parents are there, the parents are there. How do you deal with their parents? Because most of them maybe may have been disowned. Do you have such cases? Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, earlier uh, last year, uh, there was a girl who got pregnant in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. And then she came uh, to Nairobi and uh, the parents chased her away. And then one of the CHVs who is in Mukuru. Uh, who is a CHOV? Uh, CHV is Community Health Volunteer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she adopted her and took care of her mm -hmm. until she gave birth, and now she's been able to to go uh, back to school. 
and then um ours was just to provide information to her encouraging her despite all mm-hmm. that has happened mm-hmm. there's still life after mm-hmm. pregnancy yes. so right now uh, she's taking care of the baby and she's also going back to school mm-hmm. so you see that is something positive that is a success yeah, story yeah, it's a success story but for what us. happens to their parents no all that is one success story but what about these other parents do you get to meet them do you get to deal with them do you get to mingle with them Yeah we 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 mingle with the parents we at times uh, some of the parents do call me and they told me they do tell us that uh, the information that you gave our child uh, is really motivating and we we can see the change in it mm-hmm. so in as much as we are engaging the adolescents we know that the parents are also the key stakeholders in these issues yeah. so we also engage the parents and at times we do have sessions where there are parents only mm-hmm. to just talk about uh, the issues of uh, sexual reproductive health because if you want to move as a country we all need to bring all the stakeholders including the policy make us the parents and mm-hmm. faith based organizations because um well i can say that there are some oppositions to uh, sexual reproductive health mm-hmm. whereby when uh, we as a people of interest who who know like that which one <laughs> like uh, for example I would say that some of the faith based religious institutions mm-hmm. when you when you when we like that is there has been a bone of contentions when it come to comprehensive sexuality education mm-hmm. so for them comprehensive sexuality education is about teaching the children issues to do with gayism issues oh. to do with the lesbianism mm-hmm. yet that is not the perspective that yeah. we we look into i remember last year we were advocating for the ministry of education and ministry of health to incorpor- incorporate a uh, comprehensive sexuality education in school curriculum where these children can be able to learn about matters mm-hmm. um, reproductive health as early as possible mm-hmm. in the sense that even if i'm going to 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 have sex i know that i'm having safe sex as a young person because i already have that information how young is young Maybe at, at 12 you know that there are some 12 year olds that are having sex and and, and they're getting <laughs> pregnant you know mm-hmm. Statis- statistics are out there that yes. shows that a 12 year old is doing KCS, kcp with a pregnancy yes. that person when you when you when you when you ask them why did you get pregnant just to try and understand understand they say me my mom does not talk to me i don't have this information and my peers some of them who are older told me that uh, we go try so you find that the person who is supposed to be giving you information they are not giving you information right away and when you make a mistake when you make a mistake now it becomes a blame yeah. game and you are now left uh, at the mercy of the world some mm-hmm. of them are even just away in the streets yeah, yeah. Sheila, yes you had something to say oh i was talking about that uh, controversial area about um a uh, young children people people just don't want to talk about sexual health to them but in reality everybody knows the statistics show uh there are young kids at 12 who are pregnant and uh, the fact that we don't want to talk about that mm-hmm. we it's like people are casting a blind eye on that and they don't really want to talk about that mm-hmm. if that child had knowledge on safe sex that child had knowledge on hiv and aids that mm-hmm. child had knowledge on sti mm-hmm. i believe they would have made a better decision mm-hmm. Yes, you it's important to put everything on the table mm-hmm. to say th- th- there is safe sex, mm-hmm. there is uh, there is HIV and AIDS, there is STI, mm-hmm. there is also abstinence because we put everything on the table mm-hmm. so that you know when someone has a lot of choices to choose from it it m- they end up making a better decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of all these choices, help us understand what is this exactly? that you talk about in regards to sexual reproductive health to these children uh, how what is the conversation exactly basically first of all we look at the age mm-hmm. you know the, there's how you frame your words according to age um and then we we just talk about you know there's do, do you know you first find out if a child knows about sex do you know sex and they mm-hmm. say yes or no and you say this is what happens when you have sex oh, you know allow we, me yes. to ask so you don't just deal with 
teenagers who are teenage moms you deal even with those who've not gotten into it yet yes uh -huh. Uh -huh. because because when you look at the teenage moms that's uh -huh. what they, that's where they were like three years ago True. or four years ago uh -huh. and nobody gave them information uh -huh. so for us to really actually curb teenage pregnancies you have to go back to three years ago or four years ago and find out okay what age could this be and then start the conversation from there mm -hmm. find out what they know find out if they know about hiv and aids about stis about all that because at the end of the day you find even a girl is having survival sex mm -hmm. because they lack the basic needs they don't have pads they don't have probably water they don't have food mm -hmm. and uh, you find them if someone is willing to offer them a hundred shillings and they can buy pads then they'll take it then they'll take it without without that knowledge so yeah. you can imagine a girl who is from a poor background and uh, doesn't have knowledge about sex about hiv and aids mm -hmm. about stis about safe sex and then they find someone and they are willing to offer them a hundred shillings mm -hmm. and they do not have maybe sanitary pads or food mm -hmm. they have not eaten the whole day they don't have food for dinner so we they have to have in because they have no choice yes mm -hmm. yes so that's where we start the conversation we talk about what do you know first and then we talk about oh, from other the known things. into the unknown yes mm -hmm. yeah margaret earlier on uh, sheila said that uh, you your project is running for a year right yeah. so what happens to these teenagers after a year uh, so because the project is running for a year and that is why we've established a sustainable mechanisms working with the youth centers mm -hmm. and linking them with the referral pathways where they can still continue to access information and also link them with other partner organizations where they can still continue getting that information until the age that they will transit when they reach uh, 25. Mm -hmm. So from um, we are, we are, we, our, our plan is to hold their hands and we, when we get more funding, we'll have them uh, on board until they are 25. Mm -hmm. So that way after 25, you know, somebody is a bit mature and mm -hmm. they're able to make some decisions. Yeah. By themselves. Yeah. Yes. So what is, we've, we've, we've had the conversation of uh, sexual reproductive health for the girls. Yes. So what about sexual reproductive health for the boys? Uh, as we said, it's uh -huh. still a group that we are still really working on to uh -huh. bring them on board. And uh, there was a time we were we were working in schools, and we were asking girls, "Do you think boys should know about menstrual health?" Uh -huh. And uh, some girls were like, "Yes, they should, because uh -huh. uh, you find that sometimes you are harassed because maybe you you You've stay." Missed. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And 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 others were like, "No, that's none of their business." <laughs> You know, and w we are still just trying to bring the men on board mm -hmm. and be like, do you know you, you, this could be your sister. Mm -hmm. This could be, this could be, th just this could be your friend without that being, feeling like you, they have to give you something in return. Mm -hmm. And we are really, really working on that. And that's why we are bringing the teenage fathers on board mm -hmm. to tell them uh, some things like, there was an issue about HPV. Mm -hmm. the, the, it causes cervical cancer yes. and men are carriers of HPV and that's also the, a conversation that we are beginning mm -hmm. that do you know that you are a carrier of HPV and these are some of the things that you should do and this is how you can protect you mm -hmm. and your girlfriend and your partner yeah so the conversation is ongoing it's just beginning uh -huh. and we really hope to do a lot of work do you there. think it's very very important for this conversation to be so out there margaret yeah it's to the boys yeah. yes it's very important because uh the mentorship that we are doing in schools uh we are uh, involving an uh, equal number of boys and girls uh -huh. so that way we we are able to pass out the information in equality mm -hmm. so that even the boys are able to understand uh, the girls' mm -hmm. uh, situation. And even the boys also go through those uh, sexual reproductive yeah. health issues in the sense that 
when they have sex, they are also bound to get HIV. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And s some of the boys also go through gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And uh, in as much as they do not carry pregnancy, but you find them that some of them, they they are sodomized. And when you give them information mm -hmm. that uh, when somebody touches uh, behind you or, uh, or touches you in a manner that is uh, suggesting uh, sexuality, it is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you give them that information and they'll be able to uh, make powerful decisions and uh, maybe say, you know, mm -hmm. they have that power to their body. Yeah. yeah. Sheila, now that you've given them information, they now know what way to take. What is this that you're doing to prevent them from getting pregnant every year? Because it's possible. Uh. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible they are pregnant this year when they are 15 they will get pregnant when they are 16 they'll get again when they are 17 yeah so some of uh when when a teenager gets pregnant mm -hmm. uh, and then the transition mode is that they become emancipated minors mm -hmm. where they can be able to make uh, some decisions regarding their health so we encourage those who have gotten uh, pregnant um, uh, to go to the facility and request for contraception, the mm -hmm. own method of uh, the, the the method of their choice, mm -hmm. so that to prevent these occurrences from happening again, because uh, it should be that uh, the first mistake is a mistake, but the second one it's because you you, you wanted to. yeah you wanted to, mm -hmm. so we encourage them to to go uh, get contraception where possible and where possible. Uh, they can abstain and go back to school and finish the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now, speaking of uh, teen moms, still, talk to me about the partnership for maternal, newborn, and child health, Sheila. What is the partnership for maternal, newborn, and child health? Um, it's a branch of uh, WHO, mm -hmm. and uh, usually they, they um, we started a partnership with them in 2017 mm -hmm. where we developed a toolkit for advocating for adolescent well-being to train people on how to advocate for adolescent well-being in our uh, 2019 we piloted this uh, we, uh this toolkit was made into the kenyan context together with the ministry of health and it was piloted the whole of 2019. Mm -hmm. in 2020 there was COVID, so we were not able to yeah, work mm -hmm. in 2021 then we started the journey for actually advocating for adolescent well-being mm -hmm. and pmnch called for uh, action uh, they have a call to action for adolescent well-being and a call to action to COVID 19. so and the kenyan government has committed they have committed to seven commitments so we are just as we this what we are doing at the moment is a uh, campaign called My Voice, My Story campaign, mm -hmm. where we are collecting voices of adolescents. We just don't go to the stakeholders and to the government and say, this is what the adolescent wants, and we are not the adolescent. So we are collecting their voices, getting to know what is really the problem, mm -hmm. what do you want to be done for you by the year 2030. It's actually a hashtag, hashtag adolescent 2030. So that as we go to the government and as we we, we just ask them, what are you doing on the call to action on adolescence and the call to action on COVID-19? What, how far are you uh, when it comes to those seven commitments you committed to? And, uh, and as we go into the MTP4, because we are, the MTP4 is being created, that is for till 2030, it will be out in July. We are just to, trying to put in our what we have collected through my voice, my story, like this is what the adolescent want, mm -hmm. wants to be done for them by the year 2030. Mm -hmm. So basically that's the work PMSH and uh, OAY, Organization of African Youth, is doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also to add on to that is that um, we've under, we, under that we have My, Vo my Vote Kenya, Mm -hmm. where uh, uh, youth, uh, various youth organizations, uh, youth individuals, youth leaders, uh, mm -hmm. we've collected some actionable 
uh, issues uh, on matters education, on matters um, economy, mm -hmm. on matters policy and governance, part participation and health, in which you want um, the, the government of Kenya, the politicians watching right now, to include those issues in their manifestos and ensure that the well-being of adolescents are well addressed when it comes to policy making, when it comes to Bill of Rights, when it comes to matters that are affecting the general well-being of adolescents. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the counties are are making the county integrated uh, development plans. So we want those issues incorporated there because when we are doing our advocacy work and those issues are not incorporated there, we are normally, when you go to a decision maker, they tell you, is that issue is in the CIDPs? Mm -hmm. Then you're told no. If it is no, then your issue will not be addressed. So we want to push uh, this uh, My Vote Kenya agenda to ensure that these issues are incorporated there, whereby when we go to advocate, we hold these policy makers accountable that you committed to support uh, teen moms to go to school, whether it is through online, mm -hmm. uh, through online or physical uh, trainings. So we hold them accountable on what they they committed to doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sheila, I am curious. Yes. Uh, if this law is passed, whereby adolescents or teen moms are taken care of, do you think there will be a rise in cases of adolescent pregnancies? Because I will say, ah, sinisawa to at the end of the day, the government will take care of me. Uh, and I, I I don't think so because uh we are we are not only working with teenage mothers mm -hmm. we are working with adolescents which is from 10 years to 19 years and uh, a 19 year old is an adolescent yeah. yes <laughs> yeah doesn't end at 60 no no mm -hmm. <laughs> yes so uh, we are working with all this group of people and we are trying to provide knowledge even mm -hmm. before we provide support for those who are already pregnant. Mm -hmm. we, we are not just rushing into providing a solution. We are trying to provide knowledge from the word go, from mm -hmm. the age 10. Like, and uh, we, it's not only, we are not, we are not only providing on matters sexual health, because mm -hmm. we have five domains. We have five domains, which is health and well-being. We have uh, positive values and contribution to the society. We have safety, which matters GBV. Mm -hmm. We have education, learning competence and skills. Mm -hmm. And then we have agency and resilience, where my vote Kenya comes in. Uh, leadership, uh, who uh, manifestos, learning to look at the manifestos of people even before you vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we have these five domains and we are providing our knowledge all around to the adolescents. Mm -hmm. So as we are not just trying to provide a solution for those who have already uh, gone into the teenage motherhood phase. Mm -hmm. We are just providing information for everybody. So I don't think it will it really will make it small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Margaret, yes. there's, I'm sure there's a lot of um, stigma around teenage moms. Not just teenage moms, but even the teenage fathers. What is it that you're doing as an organization, or even in your project, to curb this particular stigma? Uh, so to curb this uh, particular stigma, we work with uh, partnership, uh -huh. partners organization, where uh, some of, of the organizations can provide um, information. And also we, as Organization of African Youth, we also provide information, like I said earlier. To the community. Yeah, to the community. Uh -huh. And just to create awareness and public sensitization mm -hmm. so that uh, these children, in as much as they have gotten pregnant, they should not be discriminated against. Because, you know, they are still, uh, at the end of the day, they are still our children and yes. we are the ones to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really important that we work um, in partnership and also continue to sensitize people around the issue of teenage pregnancy and make people understand some of the root causes that cause teenage pregnancy. And then, uh, for example, if it is from parental per perspective where a parent does not provide the basic needs of the child, you tell that parent, you know, when you don't give your child a sanitary towel, mm -hmm. they'll go out there and to look for it themselves. To look for it themselves. And mm -hmm. then when they get pregnant, you now start blaming them. So you'd rather prevent 
prevention is better than cure. So sure. you you would rather prevent that issue mm -hmm. by making that parent aware, because even some parents they 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 don't have that information. Mm -hmm. So we we work um, in an integrated manner where we bring all the stakeholders involved, but, and we empower them information mm -hmm. with information. Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, like for instance, we, we not only work in Nairobi, we also mm -hmm. work in Kisumu. Oh, like okay. For instance, in Kisumu, OAY is a part of uh, the technical working group that for against teenage pregnancies. And in this technical working group, you have all the stakeholders. We have the parents' representatives. We have the head teachers' representatives. We have the county government mm -hmm. of Kisumu, which is really supportive. And then we have OAY and other... CSOs that are working for the same cause. Mm -hmm. And so these technical working groups come comes together to just look at how can we end stigma around this and how can we end teenage pregnancies in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of, uh, you said not just Nairobi and Kisumu. So where else are you based in the country? Uh, for now, we have our offices in Nairobi and Kisumu, mm -hmm. but we 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 usually venture out into other counties, mm -hmm. like for instance, the toolkit, the, P the PMNCH toolkit, we launched it in Kilifi. Mm -hmm. So whenever we can, whenever our resources are enough, we go out into other counties that we feel like, according to the statistics, really need this kind of uh, support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And also to work, uh, to add on to that, um, uh, sustainable Development Goals uh, 17 of partnership mm -hmm. requires us to work um, in a coordinated manner whereby we as OAY, we cannot uh, reach uh, all the parts of Kenya, yeah, yeah. but there is an organization uh, maybe in Mombasa or in Machakos mm -hmm. or even in Narok uh, that can Help. that we can work together yes. to ensure that we reach as many people as, as possible. possible. So yeah. we uphold uh, SDG number 17, where we work with a lot of partners to ensure that this information reaches as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, as we are about to wind up, I'm sure there is a teenage girl out there who has now watched you and feels like, I would really want to get to Margaret and Sheila. How would they get to you? How would they access you, Sheila? Um, or the organization, rather. Oh, for, uh, to, to access the organization, we have our website, mm -hmm. which is oayouth.org. You can find us in our website. Mm -hmm. In our website, you'll find our contact information, our, our email, we have our Twitter, we mm -hmm. have our Instagram, we have Facebook, and All we have details. a phone number. Uh -huh. All are the details the are there in our website. Mm -hmm. So we encourage all teenage, teenagers out there who need help, who need support, mm -hmm. even if it means um, mentorship, you are stuck in life, you don't know. Just someone to talk to. Yes. You you just want maybe to go back to school and yeah. uh, such as things. Because uh, even yesterday we were collecting um, names and, uh, and uh, teenagers who are really willing go to go back to school, mm -hmm. who are in our group. And Masai Technical Institute will be reaching out to them in nice. a few. Mm -hmm. So we are really excited for this journey, and mm -hmm. we are urging any other teenage uh, teenager out there who is who is just feeling like it's time for change. They can contact Organization of African Youth mm -hmm. on our website mm -hmm. or a youth Kenya. That's amazing, yes. Margaret. Talk to that teenage girl out there. Talk to that teenage boy. Talk to that teenager out there as we as we wind up. Uh, uh, to the teenagers hearing me, uh, those who have already gotten pregnant and those who have not, uh, I'll say information is power. Reach out to somebody who can give you positive information. And also if you've gotten pregnant, all uh, uh, hope is not lost. And also I'll say that um, if maybe by mistake you got HIV, uh, HIV you can live with the HIV. You can you can take your drugs uh, religiously and also just live like any other individuals. And if you are going through um, uh, sexual and gender-based violence, ensure that you you reach out to um, 
a counselor or a police station where you can be uh, you can be able to get help mm -hmm. so that uh, th that issue of uh, GBV is addressed because you know that the, the 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 president committed to ending GBV by 2026 and uh, we as individuals we also have our own mandate of reporting those cases yeah. so that the perpetrators of gender based violence can be arrested mm -hmm. and taken into account so that we completely eliminate cases of GBV. Mm -hmm. And also I'll say that uh, creating awareness, like the other day the border border riders uh, sexually yeah. harassed a lady. Yes, yes. So we need to create awareness that uh, even us women, we need to feel safe when we are walking out there. Mm -hmm. We need to be protected and we need to be, we need the laws to, to we need uh, the laws to, to be, be by our side to be our, by our side and protect us so that yeah. we can walk confidently out there mm -hmm. and um yeah that's it sheila anything to say before you close uh nothing much just to encourage the teenagers out there mm -hmm. to tell them that uh they need to speak out mm -hmm. they shouldn't be afraid mm -hmm. when when you have a problem the only way you can be helped is by is speaking, by speaking out, out. Find any means possible, find any help wherever you are, mm -hmm. and please speak out. That way you will receive help. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Huh? Okay, if I can finish. So there is uh, the website for My Vote Kenya where those actions are. Yes. It is www.myvotekenya.org. Mm -hmm. So you can visit the website and understand uh, those uh, call to action. And if you are a politician, if you are an aspirant, we can work together to ensure that uh, these issues are well addressed so that we, for the betterment of our country and for the betterment of our people. And our tomorrow. Yes, and our tomorrow. That was powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed us. the conversation. Yeah. Thank you for having us. And thank you for doing an amazing job taking care of the teenagers. You know, they say our future starts from down there, yeah. from the young people. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. That has been our conversation on sexual and reproductive health. We will be coming back after a short break with our conversation on contraception. I asked you earlier, what do you think uh, should take the role of, take the bigger role when it comes to contraception? One man can impregnate 365 women in a year. One woman can get pregnant once a year. Before we close, actually, what are your thoughts? That is very true because uh, the 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 men then they can uh, they can impregnate. They can get someone pregnant yeah. a different even person in a day. day. It can be even five Two or, or five. six. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So as a lady, so I think we are, um, in as much as we are advocating for women to take contraception because they are the ones carrying pregnancy, even men, men should be involved in conversations around contraception because some of them, uh, some of the men hinder the ladies from taking contraception. Yeah, true, because also. you know, even, even when you look at uh, things like menopause, men don't have menopause. This yeah. men can get you pregnant even at 95. Yeah, true. That is very true. So it's very important for 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 us to create awareness uh, regarding men also supporting their partners and also uh, participating in uh, taking contraceptions like vasectomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Your opinion? Uh, I think uh, I think we we have to start speaking about male contraceptives. Right. Yes. I think that's the conversation that has to begin. <laughs> Aside from the condom, they should come up with something e else. Yes. And they are already there, but they're not being embraced. True. Yes. And, and it's a conversation that has to be actually started. Yes. Yeah. That is... And all this is brought about by sociocultural practices where a man has all the powers. And it's high time that this power is distributed equally among men and women so that uh, we women, we can be able to make informed decisions and have that bodily autonomy regarding our reproductive health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. We are coming back with the conversation. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel at KUTV Kenya on Twitter, at KUTV Kenya on Facebook, at KUTV Kenya on Instagram are our handles. Talk to me. Let me know. Who do you think should take the bigger role in contraception? See you after a short break.
KUTV, in conjunction with Kenyatta University Funeral Home, is now offering death announcements immediately following our news bulletins at 7 p.m. At this sorrowful time, as you share in your grief, allow us to communicate your announcement of your loved one on KUTV in both Kiswahili and English. For more details, kindly inquire at the KU Funeral Home Service Desk or call 0736-928-380 or dial 20 and had a child, they decided to move back home and make things official. Now, here is the bombshell. They found out that they were related. Wow. With Orbital Global, you can save yourself the embarrassment. How well do you know your family lineage? Your cousins, uncles, aunties, nephews, nieces? Orbital is here for you. Visit www.orbitalglobal.com. Orbital Global, connecting families, uniting nations. You guys attended the NDC, the yes. UDA NDC, the other day, and I'll bring up an issue here of Moses Courier uh, saying that Walimuibia Rais Uru Kenyatta Kura Hadia Kaingia Kwenye Kitty. And Moses Courier defends himself by saying that he was supposed to talk about Kuimbia. Yes. What's your take on that? Uh, you see, you see, eh? <laughs> the, for the case of Moses Kulia, uh -huh. we have this ascent, the African ascent. Approximately 120,000 people develop TB in Kenya every year. 48,000 of those people are people suffering from HIV and AIDS. And 18,600 are people who die from TB. Yes, so tuberculosis is an uh, infectious disease caused by a bacteria, a special kind of bacteria that we call mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yeah. And um, the importance of TB is that it's still a global problem. You know, okay. it's an old problem that's been with us for centuries, uh, but it still continues to cause a lot of ravage in the world. Therefore, it is important for us to create awareness on TB, the prevention and also the treatment. And that's going to be our topic today on Focus on Health. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us this far. 
I asked you earlier. No, before I tell you what I asked you earlier, uh, we've had uh, uh, Sheila and Margaret here to talk about sexual reproductive health, especially in adolescents and teenagers, teenage moms, teenage fathers, and that uh, conversation was very inspirational to see that they're taking care of our children from the roots going up. They are inspiring them, they're giving them information, uh, empowering them with a lot of knowledge to enable them to make very informed decisions in the further stages of their lives, and which is very interesting. If you've not uh, caught up with us, uh, you've, you've just joined us, you can catch up with the conversation on YouTube and even on our Facebook page at KUTV Kenya. Uh, don't, don't usipitwe, usipitwe. Our conversations will always be there for you to catch up on, even if you join us a bit later. We get to talk about contraceptives. What do you think about contraceptives? What is your opinion in regards to contraceptives? Before we got into our break, I asked you a question. One man can get 365 women or more pregnant in a year. But one woman can only get pregnant once in a year. Who do you think should take the bigger role or should wear the bigger shoes when it comes to taking contraceptions and taking precautions in regards to sex and contraceptives? Talk to me. Right before that, I'd, re uh, I'd like to read for you some feedback. You have Richard Okenye. Hi, Nina. Hi, Richard. Richard is our host for uh, Biashara Tuesday. Tune in to each and every day. We have Rise Today. We have... Um, Alton Culture Monday, we have Biashara Tuesday, we have Woman Crush Wednesday, we have Makala uh, TBT tomorrow, and we also have Entertainment Friday on Friday. So tune in each and every day. That is Richard Okenya. Hi, Richard. Good morning. Eagle, Eagle. Hi, Nina. Hi, Eagle. Wasike Wanyoni, our host for Entertainment Friday. Okay, hi. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, we also have... Jackie, hi, hi Jackie, Waberu Kennedy, hey Nina, great show, wishing you a woman crush Wednesday, and all the single ladies in the building. Are there single ladies in the building? Well, hello to you too. Thank you, Akim and Salim. Hello, guys. I don't need greetings for the rest of the year. Thanks. So, thank you so much for your feedback. I'm still waiting for you to tell me what you think about contraception. But right before we get into that, right before our peer counseling team joins us, I have Tina Brown with me on set here to talk us talk to us about her music, her musical journey, uh, how her music, her new music, everything about her musical journey. She's here to sing to us to entertain us. We'll be coming back with Tina in a short while. Wow. Well, wow. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have a very beautiful voice. Yeah. I am stunned. The woman was too stunned to speak. <laughs> Nashukuru sana. Good morning. Morning to you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Una filaje asubu ya leo. Uh, I feel fresh. Mm -hmm. and I feel you look fresh. <laughs> and I feel so awesome to be here with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good platform for even artists to get to their fans, mm -hmm. to get new fans. Mm -hmm. So it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling. How has your week been so far? Uh, it has been so busy. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, so far so good. I can't complain. You can't complain. Yeah. I want to know who is Tina Brown. <laughs> Uh, Tina Brown is a female artist in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I'm a songwriter. Mm -hmm. I'm also an actress. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. A songwriter, an actress, yeah, and, and an artist. Exactly. You do have a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. You do have a beautiful voice. Yeah. Nibia, how has your musical journey been? Uh, it hasn't been so easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thank God because I've learned so many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, each and every stage of my life, I've been like growing. So it's like a growing process. Mm -hmm. Because where I was like uh, six months ago, mm -hmm. it's not where it's I not am where now. You are now. The most important thing is seeing growth in your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't expect to like boom, like all of a sudden, yeah, you know? Yeah, you can't, you, you can't uh, be an overnight star. You yeah, can't exactly. be an overnight star, yeah. but you, that you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, as long as I'm seeing growth, it's all That's good. the most important. It's the most important thing. Yes. Yeah. Yambia, Uli, when did you realize that you have such a beautiful voice that you can, <coughs> sorry, that you can actually sing? Actually, art has been in me since I was a kid, mm -hmm. since I was around, uh, I think, uh, eight to ten years old, mm -hmm. because I used to love R&B so much. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to Beyonce, to Maria Carey, Jordan Sparks, Rihanna. Mm -hmm. I used to really love their love songs. Mm -hmm. So I can say that kind of inspired me to also become Get a singer in music. future yeah, and do love songs also. Mm -hmm. I also used to be so active in school, in music festivals. Mm -hmm. I used to recite poems, shairies. Mm -hmm. I've been to provincial levels oh, wow. to recite all those things. Mm -hmm. So I can say that art has been in me since I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. You said you used to listen to Beyonce, Mariah, mm. all these people. Yeah. Uh, when you were that young, yeah. who are you looking up to? Uh, most importantly, I think it's Beyonce. Uh -huh. She really inspired me. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I can say Beyonce. Beyonce. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right now, now that you're older, who do you look up to? <laughs> who is this artist you say, huh? hey, um. one day I'll get there? Uh, I can say still Beyonce because you know, mm -hmm. she's a legend. Yeah. And uh, I don't think uh, that has changed the perception that uh, I still she inspires me a lot up to today. Mm -hmm. So she's my overall all-time artist. She's that one woman you want to be exactly. one day. Exactly, yep. That's interesting, that's mm. interesting. Nyambi, about your music. You have new music, Sari? Yeah, I have a new music, Netwa Sari, that's my latest project. Mm -hmm. It's almost two months old now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sari has opened so many doors for me. Wow. Yeah, it's a love song, but uh, a club bang at the same time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it has been so well, like, what uh, Because it's doing very well even on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can say that uh, it, it's a positive response to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, so far, mm -hmm. uh, out of all the music that you have, yeah. which is your favorite? <laughs> which is your favorite song? <laughs> Wow. Okay, they are my babies, so I love them equally. I was about to say, you know, you can't say you have a favorite baby. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, because before you release any music, mm -hmm. yeah, your song na kongo me put all of you in it. Mm -hmm. So akunang like, gaila like ah ina fanya like mm -hmm. si pendi. So like uh, all of them, I just love them equally. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's assume right now. Mm -hmm. Let's assume right now. Uh, Hamu yeah. does better than Sari. Uh -huh. You know, you never know. Yeah. Ngome is a hit overnight. Yeah, sure. We put a TikTok and you kill him to an advance to Hamu. Mm. You wouldn't love Hamu more than Sari? Okay, see, that's your No, no, I'll just be thankful. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, doesn't matter to his song, Mekwa, a lot of blessings. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that you're kissing. Now, you said earlier that you are also an actress. Yeah. Who is your favorite actor or actress? Local or international? Oh, wow. Uh, I can say Lupita. Lupita? Yeah. Hmm, okay, which mm. is your favorite show that Lupita has done? Favorite movie, favorite series? Mm -hmm. By Lupita? Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, I'll answer that next time. I've forgotten, but uh, there's so many. There's so many? Mm. Now, you know I'm asking you why? <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to give you a small challenge. Uh -huh. So I'll still need you to tell me, okay, any other other than Lupita? Even local is still fine. 
Uh, local, I love uh, Sarahasan. Sarahasan. Yeah. Um, hmm. And Sarah. Jackie. And Jackie. Jackie Pick yeah. one. Uh, okay, the fierce side, I love Jackie. Mm-hmm. The fierce so, side, I love Sarah. Sarah Hassan. Mm. I want you to pick just one. I have just something one. for you, so that's how I'm asking. <laughs> I, 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 I just want one. Just give me one. Oh, wow. Mm. Let me go with Sarah. Sarah. Mm. Favorite show? Uh, Zora. Zora. Mm. I want you mm-hmm. to imitate for me mm-hmm. your favorite scene by Sarah. Oh, my goodness. But I can't remember. <laughs> Not scene, even like a part. Uh-huh. Imitate Sarah. What? Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You are giving me a difficult task, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, for me, for me, me mm. love Sarah, mm-hmm. but I love, I love the Sarah on crime and justice. Oh, okay. That's the version of Sarah I love. Oh, you don't like the soft part? No. Mm. I love I love the sarcastic, fierce, go get a her mm-hmm. on crime and justice. Mm-hmm. But then, you love the softer side. Mm. So that's why I want you to imitate the softer side. Okay, okay, let's assume like uh, I'm talking to my man mm-hmm. and uh, maybe he has been cheating on me or something like that. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, hey baby, you know I've been there for you. I've done everything to save this relationship for us. But all you have done is just hurt me, do all the bad things, humiliate me in front of my friends. Like, I don't know what else I can say to you. Hey, I keep my friends away, gosh. <laughs> Hey, they should give you a scene. That was nice. Thank you, thank you. That was really nice. I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Though, speaking of the fact that you chose the love aspect of it, mm-hmm. Umasya Masari is a song about love. Yeah. What inspired that song? Actually, I just wanted to do like a club banger, mm-hmm. a hype song, but yes, still yes. love song. Mm-hmm. Which I love song still as much as slow. Yes, yes, yes. So I like, a love song, but a hype song at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, mm. that's interesting. Mm. Uh, to Kianza, Umesema, music, the musical journey has had its challenges. It's been challenging. Mm. What are some of the challenges that you've gone through? Uh, I can say like uh, music is not easy. Uh-huh. It's very expensive, uh-huh. especially when it comes to marketing. Yes, yes. So that's the most like hectic part uh-huh. I've faced so far. Uh-huh. Uh, other than that is like uh, me being as a female artist, You'll find uh, a lot of people like uh, trying to blackmail you. Like, uh, if you really want this thing, you have to do this for me, like social favors oh, or something yeah, like that. Yes, yes. But me, it's something like uh, I said, like I'll never do mm-hmm. in this industry. I said, like uh, my talent is is what is going to take me there, mm-hmm. but not any other favors or something like that because I know I'm talented. Mm-hmm. So why should I like uh, go through those shortcuts? Mm-hmm. So let, let my let my talent take me there, but not any other thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- those are some of the challenges that female artists face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did you officially decide to start music as a profession? Uh, last year, around March. Mm-hmm. That's when I released the uh, number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a hit song. Nah, uh, it was well received. Mm-hmm. So that kind of like uh, motivated me to even continue releasing more and more music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, so how has it been this far? I can say it's beautiful because people have uh, responded very nicely. People are loving my content. Everywhere I go, those who discover me, they just love my music and Mm -hmm. everything about me. So that shows like uh, where I'm going. It's like I'm I'm headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Do you have a team or you work by yourself? Uh, For now, I'm working by myself. Mm-hmm. But of course, I have those people who are guiding me, who are telling me to do this and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I d- I'm not in any uh, management. I'm managing myself for now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Two to five years from now, mm-hmm. where do you feel you should be? Oh, na Two to five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to be the best female mm-hmm. artist in Kenya mm-hmm. and also in Africa. Yep. Wow, mm. that is nice. Yep. All the best. In, Thank you so in, much. In that journey. Yep. Uh, today we have a conversation mm-hmm. on contraception. Yeah. And I am asking, a man yeah. can get more than 365 women pregnant yep. in a year. Mm-hmm. A woman mm-hmm. can only get pregnant once yep. in a year. Who do only you think? 
yeah, you can only get pregnant once it's nine months. Oh, yeah. So assuming you get ah, pregnant in January, <laughs> you will deliver in mm -hmm. September, October there, right? Mm -hmm. You give yourself a month, you'll probably get pregnant again in December. Yeah. So you can only get pregnant once yes, a year, yeah, right? Sure. Who do you think should wear the bigger shoes in it regards to, to contraception between the man or the woman? I think to be fair, I think it should be the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, you know, the society right now, like, it only like wants women to take that responsibility, but I think men should take that bigger part. Because assuming this man will live for a hundred years, I see and up to eighty-five, na alianza ku impregnate at twenty. Mm -hmm. You see, this man has filled the earth by himself. Yeah, and most of them they they're so reckless. They just uh, give out babies out there. They don't take just care of them. Just distributing, distributing. They're not taking care. So you find so many, you know. Uh, fatherless children or something like that. So I think men should take the bigger role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I also think it's the man. I genuinely think it's... Oh, that was very <laughs> obvious. I genuinely think it's the man. Exactly. But yeah. we shall see. So mm. we come to the end of the conversation. Mm. Any, where can we find you on your socials? Uh, so, hi guys. Thanks for riding with me. Thanks for believing in me. In those uh, women you are Leo, you can find me on my social media platforms. Uh, Facebook is Tina Brown. YouTube is Tina Brown. Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, Unipada Tina Brown underscore KA. And also, you can stream my music in all the digital streaming platforms, Najita Tina Brown Kenya. So, you'll find my music there 24 7. Everywhere. Go there, Spotify, support me. Boomple, kila mali. Exactly. Okay. Nantash Kurusana. Nice. Yep. Tupati Sari. Play for us, Sari. Entertain us. Hello everyone.
everyone. This is the new chapter of Let's Be Fit. I'll be host DiCaplo. I'm here to give you various workouts. I'll be having different trainers. Uh, we'll have Zumba classes. We'll have aerobics classes. We'll have uh, box exercise. We'll have cutter box. Just the show comes every Thursday from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Keep it locked. Make sure we keep fit. And that's it from me to you. Let's be fit. Kipwani on our KUTV Facebook page every Saturday, 4 p.m. Unemployment has hit you hard. Your salary is meager. You decide to venture into business, but you're struggling to thrive in it. You would want to rip a big tip on how not to run into losses. Forget the preachy business blogs, the hyperbolic motivational speeches, and all the rules down desperation. Lola is an app that gives you a chance to watch videos, listen to audios, and read articles wherever you are for free. Motivational stories, dramas, campus life, technology, lifestyle, adventure, sports, academics, jobs, entertainment, and more. Download Lola now on Play Store. All you need, you got Lola. Bila shaka, biu ya mgambo ikilia, kuna jambo. Na sasa, katika KU TV Rise Today, makala ya TBT. Tunaongeza kuni, tunawasha moto. Tunaingia barabarani kuangalia hali ilivyo. Takwimu za corona na kupa. Habari zinazojiri na zinazokuhusu na kujuza na kukumbusha yaliyotendeka siku kama hii ndani ya historia kisha na kuletea wageni na wataalamu tudadavui tufahamu na tuchukue nafasi yetu kama vijana katika uongozi uchumi na masuala ya kisiasa nchini na joto likizidi tunaingia uwanjani tunachambua spoti ya Kenya ni kila alhamisi saa moja hadi saa nne asubuhi na mi Vincent Maena almaarufu ojwang mtoto wa Mariam ndani ya KU TV a new experience This is Tech Innovation Show Women in Tech Edition. After campus, I went to create my first email address and what shocked me was the prize of creating an email address. Personally, one achievement that I made last year that um, I'm really proud of was uh, being recognized as a GDE. I'm recognized as the first female flutter GDE in Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa and the first uh, GDE in Kenya as well. Does it feel good? Thank you so much for joining us. We are back with the conversation of the day, contraception. Today we get to talk about contraception, different types of contraceptives, the effects they have, how to use different types of contraception. And in regards on how to use uh, different types of contraception, I'd like to give a disclaimer. This uh, particular conversation and this particular launch is only for adults above 18 years should only be used with um if you are below 18 you need to get we were told what's it called this cons consent and assent you need assent from you and an adult to be able to use what we are going to demonstrate from here every conversation that goes past here is for adults above 18 years and this is from demonstr is for demonstrative Papa says, if you are below 18, please, I don't tell you not to watch, but I can tell you not to watch. 
So talk to your parents if you need insights, if you need to learn, and everything on this table is for educational purposes. Karibuni sana. I'm so elated for this conversation. How are you feeling this morning? You're fine. You're fine? Yes. This is uh, the Kenyatta University peer counseling team. They're here to teach us about contraception and different types of contraceptives and how to use the different types of contraceptives. And the effects as well. We have some props with us on our table. But before we get into all this, I'd like them to introduce themselves kindly. Feel free. Okay, thank you. My name is Rashid Sami. I am a, a Kenyatta University peer counselor. Uh -huh. Yes, trained one. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I'm also a student. I am an engineering student uh -huh. currently in my first internal attachment. Oh, I'm curious. You're an, you're an engineer? Yes. And why are we here? Yeah, Talking about contraceptives? <laughs> yeah, because I've said I am a peer counselor, mm -hmm. and uh, these are the, some of the areas mm -hmm. we are ready to talk about. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. The lady in the house. Yeah, I'm Mary Kirago, a third year student taking Bachelor of Arts Psychology. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I'm a peer counselor and also a sexual reproductive health advocate. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you. Karibu Nisana. Thank you. Before we get into the conversation of the day, I had a question. Uh, I had asked my guests, no, my fans, oh, not fans, my, our audience a question. Who should wear the bigger shoes when it comes to contraception? Is it the man or the woman? If you look at uh, it logically, one man can impregnate 365 or more women in a year, right? But one woman can only get pregnant once in a year. So who should get the contraception between the man and the woman? Uh, according to me, I think it should be fair enough to both. But unfortunately, women are the ones most contraceptives are dif are designed for women mm -hmm. so women get to put on the bigger shoe and we only have the men uh, only you know practicing vasectomy for them but there's a time there's a time we had um a pill and a sindano last year there's a time there was that conversation where they had introduced a pill and an injection and then it went up and then it died down it was it was not well received even a vasectomy is really not well received Let's be on a yes from a man. You know, tell me, you're the man here. What okay. is your opinion? According to me, mm -hmm. uh, I think it should be the woman. Mm -hmm. We we can uh, stress on using the contraceptives. <laughs> because, uh, you see, the, the most vulnerable uh, human being is the woman. Because a man, let's say, let, let's take uh, an example of a dog and uh, the, the little ones. Eh? You, we are not uh, tying the little ones, but we are tying the, the dog. Which means eh, the, the, the if we can tie the dog, eh, we will uh, let the little ones just be around. We will be protecting that. The same scenario here. If we, we, we contain uh, the woman here, then uh, I think because already man is outside there, we, we, we is like out of control. But we can control the woman, so we can stress on her much. I want to argue with you so badly. Yes. Why would you want to control the woman? So you control the one who's dangerous. You're but the dangerous one. The as one we are not who is I can only dangerous. I can only get pregnant once in a yes. year. So yeah. are you containing me? You should contain yourself. Now, look at this one here. You can impregnate me today, impregnate her tomorrow, impregnate her the other day. Yes. <laughs> but then you only get once. Exactly. Yeah. In, in those nine months, nine times 30 is to 70, you can impregnate other to 70 women. Mm. Well, I'm still pregnant with the first one. Yeah. So but when we use contraceptives eh, on you, I can go around all those 360 degrees without and impregnate none. Which is, the whole, which is the whole point? 
Yeah, that's why I'm saying eh, <laughs> the woman can take them to protect because a man can can go all round, mm -hmm. but if you are protected, you definitely not get pregnant. I am of a contrary opinion. What do you think? <laughs> I just think this whole conversation is very controversial. So oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I want you to uh, let's 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 go through the types of contraceptives. How many contraceptives are there? Uh, there are quite a number. We have different types of contraceptives. For example, we have uh, the hormonal contraceptives. Mm -hmm. uh, under the hormonal contraceptives, we have the COCs, that is the combined oral contraceptives. Mm -hmm. uh, the combined oral contraceptives contain two hormones, progestin and estrogen hormone. Mm -hmm. We also have the mini pill containing progestin only. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have patches. The ones placed are uh, underneath the arm or at the back. I've always been curious about how patches work. Okay. <coughs> the, Sorry. They are hormonal, so the moment they are placed maybe at the back of your hand or at the back, uh, they release those hormones, either progestin or estrogen, to help uh, prevent pregnancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. We have vaginal rings mm -hmm. also. They release different types of hormones, estrogen and progestin hormone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, to add on that, uh, uh -huh. of course there are several, as she has said, uh, uh -huh. including the one we have here. Yes. These are the condoms, uh -huh. and uh, they have been classified. We can classify them as internal and external. Uh -huh. The internal one is the female condom, uh -huh. this one, and uh, the external one is, is one. the male condom. Uh -huh. This is also a type of uh, contraception. contraceptive, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, as he has, uh, she has said, we also have the IUDs the intrauterine devices and the implanon yes aha uh -huh. we also have the poprovera the injectables that is usually injected after every three months mm -hmm. yeah interesting uh, with the amount of knowledge that you have what is the most advisable contraception to women the most advisable uh is the condoms because for condoms mm -hmm. it acts as a barrier so mm -hmm. it prevents not only pregnancy but also sti and mm -hmm. hiv and aids it's the best mm -hmm. when used correctly and consistently mm -hmm. yeah at what age do you think um an individual should get into contraception rashid okay i think it should be above 18 years mm -hmm. to start there yes but then now you see we we have the different types of contraceptives mm -hmm. and uh, they are used at different ages like now when we want to use a let's say a woman mm -hmm. who has already given birth eh, can uh, opt to another type of contraceptive than a lady who is uh, has not uh, gotten yes mm -hmm. yeah so like for for let's say for us youth i conquer with my friend here let us use condoms mm -hmm. yes now, for those who have completely refused to use condoms, like earlier, the one of the first conversations we had, you were talking about uh, teenage moms and teenage pregnancies, which makes it so obvious that adolescents are already engaging in sexual activities from as young as 12. So do you think that they should get into contraceptives, Mary? opinion will be okay they need first of all to be trained uh -huh. about uh, sex education because when you go to so many schools sorry to say sex education has been that subject whereby you find maybe the maths teacher sorry to pick on the maths teacher niana kam kuchukua that lesson in order to teach maybe extra maths lessons mm -hmm. but it's high time that we educated our teenagers our adolescents about uh, contraceptives because truth be told as much as we are trying to refrain or hide from the truth these people are sexually active yes. looking at the statistics back in 2020 so many uh, teenage girls got pregnant and maybe some of them or many of them have dropped out of school mm -hmm. so it's high time that they get to be taught about contraceptives mm -hmm. and then it be left for them whether to decide to use them or, or not, not but them. after impacting them with the knowledge mm -hmm. yeah. what is your opinion yeah I I really agree on giving information first mm -hmm. because uh, now maybe they are doing that because of lack of the information they even don't know what they are doing because they are little but once we get out we create that awareness mm -hmm. that is a uh, best contraceptive on the awareness side. yes mm -hmm. yeah 
Now, we have two types of uh, contraception, the hormonal and the non-hormonal. Mary, what are some of the side effects of the hormonal? Uh, some of the side effects of the hormonal, we have uh, nausea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes at first, because of the hormones in that uh, pill, we have nausea, we feel vomiting, we have headaches or mm -hmm. migraines. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, you find the lady uh, gaining too much weight or losing weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have, Rashid, do we have side effects for non-hormonal? For non-hormonal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mild ones. Eh? Mm -hmm. Like mm. which ones, for example? Mm, like, uh, there is uh, sometimes can lead to either, you feel now we are different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, rashes, yeah. allergic to latex. That, yeah, allergic ones. Eh? Now, so that, now that, now uh, that, uh, now that um, you've said the main contraception we should take is condoms, yes. what happens to those people who are allergic to latex? Yes, uh, but uh, there are some that are latex uh -huh. and others are latex rubber. Free. Yes, uh -huh. so if you are allergic to rubber, you can opt for the... Uh, if you are allergic to latex, can use the latex free yeah wow now i am curious to how these things work i am very curious me i am here to learn yeah 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 we the can flow is yours i am here at this particular point i and my audience are here to listen to learn and to get this experience the flow is now yours teach us how to use these columns can I stand? Yeah, you can stand. You can stand. Should I bring? Uh, yeah, but let us demonstrate the female one first. first. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so here we have the female condom, uh, and at the back of it we have the steps in which uh, you can use it from the first step to the last step. So basically before using a condom, any condom, be it the female condom or the male condom, the first thing is usually to check the expiry date. Uh, mine is going to expire in 2025. Uh, and then you also spread the lubricant inside so that you can, it can be easy to use and also check whether it has any holes. And then- Wait, what? You spread the lubricant inside, mm -hmm. and then you, I don't know. You can, you can oh. do like this. That's this. Yeah, yeah, my friend can. And then you check if there are any holes, just to check if it has been damaged. Yeah. Oh. If you find any. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It has been terminated, so it is not safe for use. So kifanya hivi utasikia kama maybe kuna mahali hewa inatokea. Yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes. So this one is safe. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So uh, at this condom, there's that point of weakness whereby uh, the serrated part up at you, we have this point of, we have this point of weakness here. So you just tear it like this all the way down and then you remove your female condom. So uh, this is how a female condom looks like. It comes in many varieties. We have this purple, one, light purple one. We have the dark purple What's one. What's the difference between the purple, the dark, and um, it's just flavors? Yeah, they are flavored. They have I'm different this flavors. this is purple and vanilla. Yeah, yeah. This has none. Yeah, depends on your liking. Okay. Yeah, so the female condom looks like this. It has two rings, the inner ring and the outer ring. So the inner ring helps during insertion, when you're inserting, when the lady's inserting it into mm -hmm. her vagina. And then uh, the difference some the the advantage of this male con of this female condom to the male condom is that it has the two rings and the two rings help increase pleasure so how do they help increase pleasure so during sex the man uh, when he's pumping his glance penis is thrusting on the inner ring so there is pleasure mm -hmm. for the female as i'm going to demonstrate how it's worn this outer ring it lies on the labia majora and labia minora and the clitoris so when having sex it's rubbing on those parts so okay. that's increasing increasing pleasure mm -hmm. so uh when wearing it and it's well lub lubricated so when wearing it i uh, you should fix it like this to form a figure eight kind of nini 
like this. And then the lady should always insert it on her vagina while she's lying on her back or squatted. And then you use these two fingers to insert it. You push it all the way, all the way. You push it all the way until it lies on the opening of the cervix to form this circular part like this. You can see, yeah, and then when having sex, the lady should always fast, during the first uh, time, the lady should always guide the penis inside so that the penis does not come and slip up IV cardi oh. because it's kind of big on the outer part. So uh, the female condom, you should wear it a few hours or 30 minutes before sex so that it can sh take the shape of the vagina. It takes the shape of the vagina. We don't oh. have a bigger or a smaller condom like other than this. Uh -huh. So you put it earlier, depending on your shape, it will take the shape of your vagina. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah. So after having sex, uh, you roll it three to four times and then you it. The reason is to why we are rolling it three to four times is in order to prevent the content that is inside, that is the semen, yes, yes. to from spilling. Uh -huh. And then you dispose it correctly. You can only use it once, uh -huh. yeah. And then if you are if you're going for many rounds, then you have to use more, more. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. That is the female. Uh -huh. <coughs> and then the male. Okay, on the male one. Uh -huh. uh, I think the procedure is still the same. Uh -huh. First, huh? Uh -huh. but most importantly. If you get the female condom, eh, the male condom, sorry, look at the expired date first. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you use the expired one, mm -hmm. then uh, like you have not used one. So the one that I'm holding here expires on 2025. Mm -hmm. So this one is fine. Mm -hmm. You can use it. Mm -hmm. Then you distribute the lubricant same inside. As just same as the female one. Same procedure. Yeah, same procedure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then uh, you, you you look at the you see we have two sides we have the serrated one uh -huh. and the smooth one uh -huh. so we we are not encouraging that you use your teeth uh -huh. to tear it up you just use the serrated one yeah because on the process <laughs> of tearing it yeah so look at uh, one of the serrated uh, side and then you tear it. It's simple, you see. And like when you do it the other side, yes. you have to struggle. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just simple. Then after tearing it, uh, you see there is uh, this tip. Mm -hmm. We first have to press on the tip uh, mm -hmm. so that you remove any air bubbles that are inside here. Okay. Yes. After you have done this, now you have the prop here for the pineal. And uh, after you, you, you hold the tip, and uh, of course, make sure that your nails are so short so that you don't damage it. Eh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Grooming. Grooming has to count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, on uh, on using it, either of you can use either the woman or the man mm -hmm. can use. And um, so you place it this way and then you just roll it down. see it is just going eh, this way mm -hmm. and so you, you you leave the tipper for for the deposits mm -hmm. you see then uh, after that you can take uh, either a tissue mm -hmm. after you are done mm -hmm. and then you roll it you pull it out and dispose it correctly and <coughs> like Mary said earlier yes thank you I believe I believe we have all learned how to use contraception. You can have your seats. Thank you so much for that a very very important lesson. Uh, personally, I have learned. I've, I think I've learned this before, but it's good to see it practically. It was theoretical. Uh, in regards to contraception and contraceptives, do you think that young people are embracing it the right way? Considering that you're peer counselors inside the campus. And the experiences you've had and how, yeah, as you counsel the students, do you think, Rashid, that the students are embracing contraception, the use of condoms, and taking precaution the correct way? Okay, first, uh, there are those that are using it correctly, uh -huh. and there are those that are misusing it. Uh -huh. And um, most, uh, the, the one that is uh, mostly misused uh -huh. is the emergence pill 
-hmm. the the P2. Yes. You see nowadays eh, they are taking it like a a painkiller. <laughs> uh, every time you feel something you want to take it but that's <coughs> not the right way. Mm -hmm. You see. So it, it is I encourage the, that uh, P2 to be used once per year. Mm -hmm. But it's different nowadays. Yes. You see per month might use it three times you mm -hmm. see so that is a misuse yes yeah mary what do you think we can do about it uh okay maybe just to add on what rashid has said mm -hmm. you find some people using both the male and the female condom at the same time mm -hmm. that is wrong because when you're having intercourse there's that friction so moja in our talka at least you need a talker at least you need a talker lakini there's kuneyo ikitoka it will tear the other one. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes unapata maybe if they are using the male condom, they put two condoms at the same time. So ingine ine zatoka ibaki kwa mschana the vagina. I'm yeah. shocked people do that. Yeah, people do that. Oh, okay. So you are telling me, hey, is there anything that uh, we can do in regards to, you know, bringing sensitization to the young people in regards to the importance of contraception? I think the best thing that we can do is to continue psychoeducating our young people and creating awareness about the existence of the different types of contraceptives we have mm -hmm. and their correct use, of course. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for the. Uh, you have something Ye to say? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, regarding on uh, how best we can reach out for for the information, mm -hmm. because it is true, people are misusing it. You see how we are using it, but then now that's why we have come out mm -hmm. we, we normal do these demonstrations we normal go out we make some forums we make some 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 days that we can sensitize the youth mm -hmm. we, we even demonstrate on how they can use it like this way because mm -hmm. right you might get the female condom yes but then you use it wrongly mm -hmm. so you don't get what you intended to get mm -hmm. Now you like a man can defend himself and say, but we used condom that day. <laughs> it was wrong, you see. Mm -hmm. So, f for us to have a, a a a future for for our youths, mm -hmm. we get out mm -hmm. and we sensitize them on mm -hmm. uh, how best we can utilize this. Because, but most importantly, we are not encouraging that uh, now we have come out to demonstrate to demonstrate how we can use condom and the contraceptives so that we give you a sure bet that you can go outside there and have sex. Mm -hmm. No, abstain. Like, that is our main message. We are doing this because now it is coming like uncontrolled. Yes. Yeah, but the best thing we can do, let us abstain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us shut away. If you can, Maze. Abstain. Yes, Three abstain. Masks. Yeah. Mary, do you have uh, we have come to the to the close of the show. Mm, I'd like you to give us a parting shot before we close the show. Uh, my parting shot will be I always had as a SRH advocate. I advocate for people to A B C. So for my A is abstinence. Mm -hmm. If you cannot abstain then be faithful to your partner mm -hmm. and if that is not possible then <laughs> if you have so many partners then use contraceptives. <laughs> A B C. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Rashid. All right, on my side. Eh? I am a Christian, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and uh, so it is better that uh, you stick to the true doctrines. Eh? Mm -hmm. Stick to what the Bible says, what the Quran says, and I believe all these books eh, mm -hmm. are not teaching us bad manners. Yes, true. They are teaching true. us good manners. Mm -hmm. So let us embrace them mm -hmm. and let us be on the right track always. Mm -hmm. And our future is so luminous. So Thank bright. you so much. Where can we yeah. get you both physically and on social media? Uh, physically, you can get us at our offices, BSSC room 272. Mm -hmm. That is the peer counselor's office. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Mary Kirago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Physically, I'm also at KU. Mm -hmm. You can find me there. We are always there, mm -hmm. ready to serve the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, my social medias, you can get me in Facebook, Sami Charo. Mm -hmm. You can get me in LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Rashid Charo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And Thank WhatsApp so also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. As we are coming to the end of the show, allow me to read some feedback. Just 
one or two more uh good morning beautiful ah it's a beautiful gosh i think men should be the ones taking it and if i may ask mbona unafanana ule dem ameimba na meja ile ngoma ya usinyaribia mood mirian mirian is a good force thank you thank you thanks eh uh, we have emmanuel chi lumo kombe cool one teach as how to teach us how to as how to use those contraceptives to secure our generations nowadays sex is done anyhow even with minors it's a good job you guys are doing to the community big up rashid sami teach use na utongeze preaching peer to exercise holy living next time he'll preach for us right we have Richard Okenye. I love this version of Morning TV. Sexual health is super super important. Nina trying struggling to keep a straight face is a discussion for another day. I thought you would not see that, so, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's show was very very educative, very informative. Thank you so much. Very knowledgeable. The conversation should definitely continue on all our social media platforms at KUTV Kenya on Twitter, at KUTV Kenya on Instagram, and at KUTV Kenya on Facebook. Please continue supporting. Do the right thing. Like Mary said, ABC, if you can't abstain, be faithful. If you can't be faithful, use contraception and most importantly, use a condom. Use all these things correctly and consistently take care of yourself sexual reproductive health is very important thank you so much to the KU um, peer counseling team for coming to taking your time to come and educate us on this very sensitive topic that should stop being sensitive my take on this whole conversation is the men should take more contraception thank you so much i've been your host Nina Gikunda. see you next week same time same place <laughs> To the reason, me and you, we gotta keep it out of defense. Turn me on like a siren. Let's make a toast to this flawless love. Turn the radio on.